Hi, and welcome back to Feline Barger Art. Today I'll be customizing a doll for the Frustrated Artist YouTube 2020 collaboration, or FAC 2020 for short. The videos created by my doll friends are linked in the description box below, and you'll find a little teaser for their work at the end of my video. Everyone had a different interpretation of the theme, but basically we are all saying goodbye to 2020 and working through our frustrations and hope for the future as 2020 begins. My concept is probably mundane, so I'll explain it a little as I work. I wanted to work around the theme of isolation, so I chose Operetta for her long face and lack of a distinct smile. As usual, I stripped the doll down to basics. Since I knew Operetta would be my base, I kept her skin tone in mind when choosing the hair color. I had these two greens that I stripped from a Halloween wig some time ago, and up against the head I felt that the more subdued green fit better. The costume wig was made of different sizes of sewn wefts, and to be able to reroute with it, I need to cut the fibers and separate them. I only cut a little at a time to keep the hair manageable and to prevent tangling. I didn't really cover rerouting in my last video. So many other artists do a better job explaining than I do, but I'll try to show how I work here. I'm using a reroute tool from the Doll Planet. It's comfortable in my hand and it holds the needle snugly. If the hair is slippery, sometimes a pumping motion will help all of the fibers stay in the head. I begin by rooting the outer hairline, but like I did with my last few dolls, I forgot to paint the scalp first. So I thought about leaving it, but the hair is kind of see-through and there would be a lot of obvious gaps. So I mix a two-part acrylic paint in Mod Podge and paint it on. The glue mixture helps the paint flex and prevents scraping or flaking when you reroute the head. I forgot that she had bangs in the original concept art, and I thought there might be enough hair there to add a new part, but I was wrong. Turning the head upside down, I fill the head with Fabri-Tac glue. I push the nozzle around the inside of the head to try to coat all of the plugs. Then I use an old paintbrush to make double sure everything is covered. I wanted her to have a cute holiday onesie, and I already owned the Kigurumi pattern from Requiem Art, but I didn't read the instructions thoroughly before starting. A stretchy knit fabric is needed for this pattern to work correctly, and I started with a stiff cotton. I also realized the legs, while cute, were much larger than I really wanted. So I had to start over completely. And I lost the footage for making the bodysuit. Basically, I took an old sock and I pinned it to the doll, then I cut around the pins and sewed the shoulders together at the top. I did use the pattern for the sleeves and the hood from the Kigurumi pattern. Turned inside out, the sock material looks super comfy and fuzzy for a doll scale, so it was a better choice overall. It's also almost a perfect match for the color I originally wanted. I lost the footage for making the hood and the ears too. I streamed to my computer while recording and lovely windows decided to update in the middle. I used the scrap hood pieces from the original cotton attempt to make the white underbelly. I drew out the shape I wanted, then cut and started sewing it to the outfit. I started with a hidden seam, but it got difficult to keep going that way after making it halfway around, and I just switched to a top stitch hemmed edge. It's only really visible if you look for it, so I'm okay with it.
To make the hood more festive, I sew on an adequately large pom-pom. The idea for her clothing is that she's isolating at home. It's just between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Since that was the time that I made this doll, she doesn't have anyone to show up for and would much rather just dress warmly and comfortably. I also have a similar Jack Skellington onesie that I like to wear in the winter. make the ears look more deer-like, I tapered the bottoms by tying and sewing them. Honestly, the clothes are one of my favorite parts. They're so cute. Meh. To be really fitting the holiday mood, I make some posable felt antlers for the hood. I cut four pieces out of felt Then I bend and sandwich a wire between them. These get sewn shut with a whip stitch and attached to the hood. So I was totally wrong about there being enough hair for the bangs. I had to go back in and add new plugs to create a new part line. Thankfully, Fabri-Tac is acetone based and will reconstitute itself if you need to add more hair and glue to a completed head. Before starting, I seal the face with Mr. Super Clear. Since the character is not very bright or happy, I wanted to keep the face tattoo simple. I painted it with a flat, almost black, dark blue color. I mentioned it briefly, but the idea is that she's isolating at home during the holidays. For the collab, we decided to express how 2020 affected us personally. Because of the situation in the US, I haven't been able to see my family much at all. No one's forcing me to stay away from them, of course, but many of my family members are vulnerable or immune compromised, so we agreed it was best to be safe for our loved ones and to stay away. I'm thankful that I've been able to see my little sister often enough to maintain my sanity. I also see my mother pretty frequently and our small group decided to hold a little Thanksgiving dinner between us. Normally we have a good 30 people in my small house to celebrate the holiday, but it just wasn't reasonable this year. Even that didn't go as planned. My grandfather called my father out in the night the day before our planned dinner. He was not well and needed to go to the ER. It turned out that he was ill with, yes, that which shall not be named. The thing YouTube will push my video down for if I speak of it. We knew what was wrong immediately and our dinner got canceled. So while my father watched and waited, better safe than sorry, we could always reschedule later. My grandfather was admitted, but got to go home after a few days. Stuff like this has happened all throughout the year, and I won't go into the details of each situation, but basically I just miss my extended family. So my doll's face is a reflection of the seclusion and the anxiety that all of this has caused. She's stressed, but she's holding it together.
tried my best to keep the face natural looking just like she has no reason to get dressed up. She doesn't bother to wear any makeup. My little brother said that she looks like a comfy goth because of her green hair and the dark face tattoo. And I can see that. I actually gave her green hair because I dyed my hair in the beginning around March. Plus it contrasts nicely with her skin color. If you're wondering, I've been using watercolor paints for most of this face up. I wanted to see how it would go, and I really liked how easy it was to undo mistakes and to blend colors. I did have to get quite a bit of paint on the brush before it was very workable though. I really like how her lips turned out. They kind of have a chapped and swollen look, like she's been biting her bottom lip for a while. I didn't do that to myself, so don't worry. When I'm satisfied with the face, I gloss her lips and eyes. Usually I do a few coats of this, but I stuck with two layers for this face. Now that the doll is done, she needs some props, most important of which is a cage. I felt a bit trapped in my own home this last year, so the cage will represent that. I use a round wooden circle and some barbecue sticks to construct the base. It's not really as bad as it seems, but things can get distorted in our minds. I'm not alone at all, and my dad even helped make the cage for me. He drilled the holes in the bottom of the base. If he hadn't, I would have been stuck using my little rotary tool for hours to try to get the holes big enough for the barbecue sticks.
Even the music that's playing in the background is because of my family being there. My little brother helped compose new songs just for this video. And my last videos feature his music as well. And yes, you can find a link to his YouTube where he uploads his work in the description box below. It's not bad to listen to if you don't want to hear me ramble. When I designed the cage, I wanted to keep the front very open because she's not locked in or being forced to stay, but is rather there by choice. After everything is secured in place with wire, I begin painting the cage black. I originally planned on the black being a base for a top gold layer, uh, but this, when this coat was done, I really liked the way it looked. It kind of has a beautiful dark feeling and it made me think of Tim Burton movies. The cage also has to be comfortable because it's where she feels the safest. I cut out and sewed some black and gray striped pillows for her to rest on. For the second pillow, I wanted it to curve a bit like those big pillows you use in bed. I sew in a gathered stitch along the long sides of the pillow and lock it in place as I go. These both get stuffed and closed with a ladder stitch. I lost the footage of this too, yay. But I made a circular pattern and made a large bed-like pillow for her to rest on. Nice and comfy. Remember the story about how our dinner was canceled? Well, guess what I ended up eating that day instead of turkey, pizza. <laughs> I mix together some light air dry clay until it's the color I want and start layering it just like you would a real pizza. After the crust, I add some sauce and then some cheese. I always burn the pizzas I make, so I would smoosh some of the darker colors around the crust so it looked like it was overdone. Then I started adding the toppings. I put on my favorites, pepperoni, bell peppers, and mushrooms. Or onions. I'm not really sure what they look like more. A few extra bits of cheese that fell over the edge of the pizza, and it's done! After it dried for a day, I did gloss the top to make it look a little greasy. Now in reality, I did cook my own pizza that day, but I like the idea of her having delivery. To make the box, I measure out a top and bottom that the pizza will just fit inside. I 
I make the edges at least as tall as the pizza is deep so the box doesn't crush it when closed. I looked up templates online on how to fold a real pizza box to see where to cut. Since the box is so small, I went with a really simple design. I cut it out and score the folded lines with a pencil. This weakens the edges just enough so the cardboard folds easily. I think it's not too bad for my first try at miniature food. And with that, everything's finished. This is the first doll I've made that has anything to do with me or my personal experience. So it was kind of weird to work a theme like isolation around toy customizing. It's been a nice way to express myself and what's been bothering me. And it surprisingly took me a while to settle on the concept for this collab. I'm really happy to have finished her and I'm hopeful that things will be a little brighter in 2021. Check out the videos that everyone else created for our collaboration. My partners were Dolly Mixtures, Stitchwick Creations, and K-O-O-A-K Factory. You can find links to their channels below. What about you guys? How was 2020 frustrating for you? Thanks so much for watching. Please like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't. Bye!